I'm going to recommend that before you start rebuilding that you have all of your parts gathered up laid out in a system of order so that you know where, you, where it is and can easily reach it. For those of you who are familiar with my uh, online rebuild guide that we wrote, gee, almost 20 years ago now, um, I had a special, I had designed a set of special tools in there. They were this rod and these three pieces of electrical conduit. These parts are used to stack the needle bearings inside the cluster gear. I'm going to show you how to do that and how to make these special tools, but I'm also going to show you a new method that I devised this week that seems to work pretty well. So um, I'm going to cover the one and I will cover the other. I'm building up two transmissions, so we'll use one assembly for one and we'll use the other assembly for the other, and you can choose which one you want to use. This is the new technique that I devised this week, and uh, I came up with it just simply trying to show people how the cluster gear bearing set worked. And once I had it assembled, I looked at it and said, hey, wait a minute, it would be pretty easy just to go ahead and assemble this thing this way. So, let me show you the way we're going to do this. Of course, if you've ever built this thing up or are real familiar with it, you'll know that this is the bearing spacer inside. You'll see that this one's got a little bit of rust and corrosion and stuff on it, uh, but it's cleaned up, it's pitted, but there's nothing wrong with it functionally. It'll work just fine. So if yours looks like that, don't worry about it. It'll be fine. All right. Now, what we're going to do... is install some rubber bands on this shaft. Okay? They're clear. Uh, you can get colored ones if you want. Um, I had my daughter pick these up for me down at the store. Uh, they were reasonably cheap. Um, I think they were like a dollar. And we're going to use them to assemble this setup. We're going to use those and we're going to use the spring from the throw out bearing. Alright, so let's get busy and I'll show you how this works. Okay, the first thing we're going to want to do is slide one of the spacer washers onto each end. Like that. Okay, once that's on, we're going to install a rubber band. And if you want, you can go ahead and install all three, all four rubber bands at one time. Each rubber band will be holding a bearing set. Now, all the needle bearings, there will be 22 in each needle bearing set. Okay. We're going to put one set of these under each one of these rubber bands, and it only takes a few minutes to do it. So, let me show you how that's done. Okay, we're going to take the spring and hook it under the rubber band. Now, we're going to try to anyway. There we go. Hook the spring under the rubber band, and all you have to do is just lift out on the rubber band and slide the bearings in. The rubber band will then hold the bearings in place. There should be 22 in each set, and you're going to feed them around all the way. And I believe it's going to be just about this point where we are going to use fast motion to speed things up and uh, we'll build the rest of this up this bearing and then we're going to start doing each of them that way and it will only take a few minutes of your time and elapsed time I will let you know when we get to the very end and I'll tell you what we have total elapsed time for assembling this and one to go
once you get them all in place, you're ready for the next washer to go on. Yep. Looks like we have a glitch. You can only put the two of the wash two of the rubber bands on at a time because they won't fit. The washer won't fit past it. Okay. All right. on that end. We're going to hold off on that washer though until we can build up the other set. All right. It's all built up as required. Grab the last washer on each end. And it's ready to be installed in cluster gear. I already have one installed in this cluster gear, but it's old bearings, so we're going to be pulling it out. I did it as a practice to see how well it worked. So we're going to shove these out. I need something to put them in. Here we go. This will work. Okay, we're going to want to install these bearings into this cluster gear. However, we do have an issue first that has to be resolved. There's no grease on any of these parts yet. So, you have to lube up the, gear, the bearings. We'll slide the assembly in and cut off each of the rubber bands as they get to the edge. Okay, one thing you want to make sure that you do, if you're using this method, is before you cut the rubber band, make sure that the needle bearings are more than halfway in to the cluster gear. Otherwise, when you cut it, they might do like they did on me. That's why you see the little pause in the video and fall out. So make sure they're more than halfway in and everything else should work just fine. All right. And there is the cluster gear 
fully loaded without a whole lot of backs and forths and ups and downs. Um, I think this may be my new preferred method, but um, we'll see as time goes on which one people prefer. All right. The next part we're going to build up is going to be the synchronizer assembly. Now, I've been using the same method of putting this together for 16, 17 years, but today I came up with a different method for assembling this, which I think is preferred to the old method. All right. Anyway, the synchronizer is going to consist of the clutch hub, the clutch sleeve, the synchronizer plates, and the synchronizer springs. The way that the synchronizer springs fit in is they fit in like this. All right, the little curve at the top fits into the slot. The other end fits around and goes over. And what you do is that you take keep that same spot for the other side and you install the spring the same way and that will take care of it on that side as well. However, we're not going to install it this way today. We're going to use a different method because what happens is when you install it that way, you're fighting against the uh, sleeve to get them back on. You're trying to hold all the springs in and trying to hold it all together while you try to slide it back in there. So we're going to use a little bit different method today. All right, what we're going to do is first thing we want to do is identify on the clutch sleeve the shiny spots. And it's going to be kind of hard to see. Let's see if I can put some light on it. There are three of these teeth inside that are shiny. They'll be directly opposed to each other in the three coordinates. All right, what we want to do is we want to find those. The reason we want to find those is because that is where, for years and years and years, your synchronizer plates rode. They rode on those spots. All right, because they rode on those spots, those spots are polished down. All right, so what you want to do is you want to find those spots and mark them for your plates. Now, if you notice, you'll see that I've taken a marker and I've marked those three places. That is where these synchronizer plates, we're going to want to put them back into those same exact spots that they came out of. Now, the synchronizer hub is going, notice this piece, the large side down. On the synchronizer hub, this tall skinny piece is going to go on the top, whereas the flat wide spot that doesn't stick up as much is going to go to the bottom. All right, what you want to do is you want to place these three springs or three, three plates into the notches that are provided for them in the hub assembly. Okay, once you've done that, then you want to try to slide them down into the clutch sleeve so that those plates are now lined up with those marks. 